So hello everyone, welcome to our very last um, 10 Reasons Why podcast. Uh, l- not the last podcast ever, the, the last one in the, the current series. The last series, series which yep. is crazy that we've got to week 10 already. Absolutely, and listen, if you have been uh, listening and watching in, we really appreciate it. Make sure you give the channel a like and a share and a subscribe and all that stuff, because we're going to do more of these podcasts, because there's some crack, aren't there? Let's be honest. Yeah, great crack, we were having great crack there. Actually. I, I, Come up with a whole new idea about how to do podcasts. Yes, you should let us know. Drop us a message. What, what While the guys were setting up, we were... Um, thinking about uh, old worship songs and humming them and humming the first few lines to see if we, people could guess them, which was some crack, to be fair, because <laughs> I have no tune in my head and uh, <laughs> through the tears of laughter. But there's so many great songs out there. Yes. Humming Robin Mark and uh, trying to guess what the song was was fun. So if you want to see that, make sure you let us know. But tonight we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, we're just rounding up and thinking about the future and, and your future. And how, how can you actually experience really good mental health uh, because that's a big issue today, right? We're going to talk about that and uh, kind of linked into that, uh, this whole idea of having really good hope for the future and thinking about, you know, because these are crazy days that we live in and can I actually believe that my de- best days are in front of me? And what does that look like? Uh, because p- people are people are struggling uh, when they think about the future. And so we want to explore that, don't we? We want to have a chat, see what the Lord says. Absolutely. And uh, I think we were, we were thinking about like you said, there's a lot, a lot of people struggling in there. Mental health has been this huge um, issue for a lot of people, particularly coming well during COVID and coming out of COVID. And so when we were thinking about it, it it's had that sense of it, it is actually about having hope, isn't it? It yeah. is actually about being able to face tomorrow, feeling not being afraid of the future and not being worried about it. Because when we think about mental health, we're sort of going, well, what exactly are we talking about? And obviously there's, you know, there's people really struggling with very serious issues, but I think on you know a basic sort of day to day level, there's quite a lot of people just struggling with anxiety, struggling with just at times feeling a bit low or feeling that lack of hope. Sometimes people are mm-hmm. even having a panic attacks yeah. when they start to feel overwhelmed by stuff, feeling just hard to cope with sort of everyday life. Um, people are just at times, and that can develop into more serious things, and they may be yeah. getting lots of thoughts that they just can't shake yeah. which leads to trouble sleeping even phobias about things so it's almost yeah. like it can start with these little niggles yeah. but if we don't deal with them and we don't find answers to them then it starts to become bigger and bigger and thought patterns yeah start to develop in people i think when we started these podcasts we started off with like how do we deal with thoughts yeah and it's almost like kind of random off now going well actually we want to help people have that hope for the future and so we want to look at a bit at the word tonight and I suppose because it's serious stuff isn't it like people it's not just um what's how it's affecting your mind but I think if these things left unchecked starts to affect people's bodies it can end yeah. up with a lot of um you know physical problems people with like digestive problems stomach problems like do you mean you know even the word disease disease is like dis-ease when there's not that ease and that rest on the inside of us yeah it can start to affect all every bit of life and, and let's face it god you know jesus came to give us life in all of its fullness that's that's his heart for us his desire for us so how can we walk into all of that basically how can we have this hope for the future yeah i i, I think it's um and we want to be sensitive because i know that there are people out there who are like these issues are real and they're profound and they have a really profound effect not just on you know on the people who have to deal with you know disorders and anxiety and depression and you know ptsd and all sorts of stuff um but also it affects the families it affects people yeah. and we, we have mm-hmm. walked that journey with lots of people in church and so i i i, I want to say that look this is not just about quick fixes and, and and trite answers but really trying to discover what the heart of god is because when i think about like the world you know and uh, we, we used to have a psychiatrist came to church and i remember talking to her it was really interesting and she said look you know mostly the answer that i that i have that the the tool that i have to wield is medical in the sense of drugs and medication and she said that's and, and that's really useful like we're not weirdos who go if if you take medication there's you, you, it's a, taking medication equals a lack of faith because that's that's blatant nonsense all right um but it doesn't, it, oftentimes when it comes to mental stuff, it doesn't fix it. Mm. it it's a coping mm. mechanism and helps mm-hmm. to sort of manage symptoms. And there's obviously some fairly significant 
impact around like the long-term use of, of, of drugs and stuff like that. And whilst I, I, I absolutely believe that, that, you know, they play a role and we need to be careful not to say to people if medication is, is part of where you're at right now, that, you know, there's something wrong with you. There's not, there's no stigma there. It's really important. But when we come to the word, I think there are better promises. You know, and it's not just managing something, but having it's hope freedom. in your heart, yeah. like having hope for the future that there is, you know, there is freedom and healing and a different way mm -hmm. of, of living. Because like even in the world, they do have some good stuff, actually. You know, there's like these new talking therapies and approaches, which are quite good. And it's it's good to talk, isn't it? It's good to, you know, particularly for men who are listening tonight. It's like we're really rubbish at actually talking and sharing about what's really going on. We, we can have surface level conversations all day long and it's fine, but that sort of question of how are you doing really? And men are getting better at it, you know, and being able to talk and, and talking therapy is a massive thing. Um, you know, cause I, I sometimes joke the way how I can summarize like a night out with my brother at the rugby, like five hours of being in my brother's company with eyes doing great. I mean, you know, you ask me, oh yeah, how's Peter doing? Eyes fine. What's happening? I don't know. Not much. He's good for him. Busy with work. And you go, is that it? Yes. And I'm going, what else is there? Alison's well. The kids are well. He's busy at work. And uh, and actually, when I'm with him, we probably just talk about rugby. And uh, are you busy? Uh huh. So am I. And so, so it's interesting that you know, we, men particularly aren't very good at this, and women, I think, are are, are better generally, but not you know, not always perfect, but, you know, when you do need help, so there's talking, then when you do need help, there's cognitive behavioral theories, you know, like thoughts leading to feelings, leading to behaviors and getting people, particularly in trauma to, to figure out, you know, don't be captive to your, your feelings um, because your feelings are just rooted in how you're thinking and how you're reframing. You know, there's really good counseling then as a result of that. And, you know, there's all, all sorts of stuff that the world actually, you know, I'm not, some Christians are really, really, I get get really uncomfortable with some of that stuff. I don't actually. I don't think it solves the issue, but I think it can be really helpful in the issue yeah. as we're on the road to freedom. Yeah. So I think that, you know, and some of those things can be used by the Lord to bring healing. But I do think that there is a, a, a better revelation. I think that, you know, Jesus does not want us to live with dysfunction and disease. And he wants us to live with hope. And so I, I kind of think... Hopefully, as believers, we can go, there's a better way mm -hmm. to deal with those issues. Yeah, but I actually think at times believers can put themselves under even more pressure because it's like, I think there's a lot of Christians who recognize, you know, Jesus did come to set us free. Yeah. So I should be walking in freedom. And it's almost then it becomes this like legalism of I know what I should be doing or I know how I should be feeling. Yeah. And, um, but as a believer, I'm still not there yet. And then it, they almost feel condemned for struggling with these things. And sometimes it can be even more of a stigma, I think, as a Christian to admit that you're struggling with mental health because it's almost like you, you feel... I should be better than this. The expectation is, oh, yeah. you, sh you should, you know, why is this a problem? I'm sure, you know, you know, Jesus loves you. He's taking care of you. You know, you just, you know, cast all your cares into him. He cares for you. It's almost like we can say all the right answers just like the Sunday school answer we can quote the right verse back but if we haven't got that revelation on the inside or if we're struggling with something um and I think you know I know I've gone through seasons where there's times I've just coped and felt like I've sailed through something and you almost feel like oh you know I've kind of got it now I, I, yeah. that thing doesn't bother me anymore and yet you can then you know have the same type of situation come on a little bit later in life or in another such another circumstance and it kind of takes you by surprise because yeah. all of a sudden it's like gosh why, why am I struggling with that again I thought I was past that mm. and then I think that's where we can just you know almost get condemned and get sort of down on ourselves that we should be better than this we should know better I should have had this figured out by now why am yes. I struggling uh, and then we we put ourselves under judgment mm -hmm. put ourselves under condemnation by going i should be better than this mm -hmm. but the truth of it is life life can be very tough mm -hmm. can have lots of stuff going on and i think you know like it's i love that quote mike tyson he talked about people who came to box him and obviously he was a big brute a big monster of a man and he said like everyone's got a plan until i smack them in the mouth <laughs> and then i go like that's kind of life isn't it we've all got mm -hmm. this plan and this idea and then you get a smack in the mouth and you're like it, it brings you back to your senses or in 
the case of Mike Tyson knocks out completely, uh, to be fair. But the, the thing is, like, you, you know, I think for believers, if we only go for what the world has to offer, then I think we're selling, not not just selling ourselves short, but we're selling the Lord short, short yeah. you know, because there is more than that. Yeah. I mean, Caroline Leaf talks about mm-hmm. that, doesn't she? We're big fa- fans of Dr. Caroline Leaf, by the way, so you can check out her stuff on, online, mm-hmm. but she's brilliant. I know, because for me, I think whenever I started listening to Caroline Leaf, it, it, to me, it, it all became very simple because she talks about how, you know, there's only really two responses to stuff in life. It's yeah. either love or fear. And she's like, you know, talks about how we've been created for love. We're designed for love. And our bodies aren't actually designed for fear. So whenever we feel these threats coming in um, and we start to get overwhelmed, we don't really know how to deal with them. And it becomes these like toxic thoughts that go off in our minds. And then there are like chemical reactions to those. And that can then start to um, have an impact on us. So it's almost recognizing that actually, you know, unless we go to the root of things yeah. and really start to, and, and fear is something that, you know, it's, it's one of those things where people go, what are you worrying about? Oh, stop worrying about it. That, that, are they, that are they telling help. you, don't worry? Yes. Of course, that's brilliant advice, isn't it? Yes. Well, just stop it. Oh, yes, just stop it. Uh-huh. And you're like, that doesn't help me, you know? And I think that's where, you know, in the world at times it can be just, you've just got to manage these emotions because they don't really have an answer yeah. to the, the fear question. But that's where, but actually with, the lord that he is the answer yeah but again it's not that just kind of trite well jesus is the answer it's like well jesus how do i experience your peace how do i you know allow your holy spirit um to so flood my emotions so that almost you know those streams of living water really become real Mm -hmm. in all the different situations that i'm facing yeah and i think for me that's where um you know it's that sense of we've got two paths to choose we're, we're constantly being given that choice of of life and death of love yeah. and fear and it's not to condemn us but it's to recognize when we are choose well feeling those emotions yeah that yeah. aren't of god it's not we're not designed for it so, yeah. so we've got to be able to let go of those burdens yeah. and it's working out how do i do that well i i think you know if, if you if you're a believer listen listening to this i i think i, I want to expect I, I, it might be good to explain that to go like what what are your two options when it comes to thinking about your future how you can live in peace have good like be in a good mental space um and the, the bible actually said it's, it's really interesting because it says you've only got two options and it, it calls it flesh and it calls it spirit right and you kind of go well what the heck does that mean in real life and so essentially it just the way to explain it is when you when the bible says you walk after flesh it, it sem- simply means that you attempt to get all your needs met independently of God. And it's not like 100% independently of God because as believers, most Christians go, well, I don't do that. I, I, I try to cooperate with the Lord and I try to um, have some sort of sense of what God is doing in me and saying to me. But essentially, it's about really leaning on yourself more than God, relying on your own strength, drawn from your own resource, figuring stuff out with your own capacity. And like, it's interesting, the Bible's clear. Proverbs isn't, Proverbs fourteen twelve goes, uh, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. And it's like all your best efforts, for the, for the most part, particularly in the world that we live in, all your best efforts are not going to be enough. The world's too complex. It's changing too fast. There are too many moving parts. And that level of complexity and ambiguity and uncertainty in the world, I don't think most people are, are, are built and, co- and can cope well with it. And that's why we're seeing such higher levels of, of, of people struggling for, around mental health and a lack of hope for their future. And so the Bible goes, well, look, if, if you you don't have to walk that way. This mm-hmm. is why like grace is such great news. Grace says you don't have to lean on your own understanding you can walk not the flesh being like the human but you can lean into the spirit the holy spirit and romans 8 9 says you're actually not the flesh anymore when you came to faith you're now in the spirit right and um so i i, I remember hearing that going all right no problem i understand that so why do i keep choosing things that seem like you know if, if that's true of me i keep choosing the flesh yeah. right i keep choosing my own understanding because it seems like it's more immediate doesn't it and that's where the Lord goes right. You know, you have tr- you have been trained over up right up until you come to faith, and even after faith, it's like He says you were you were in the flesh actually before you became a Christian, and then He says you are now in the Spirit, so you can be in the Spirit but still choose the flesh. 
You can be a Christian. You can be filled with, with God. But you still choose the old patterns of thinking and the old ways of doing it. And that's why there's that verse in Second Corinthians 5, which I love, where the Lord goes, right, so don't walk by what you can see. Because if you're, if you're a believer, the world only walks by what it can see. And then it realizes it's not enough. And people get stressed. They get anxious. But you've got to walk by faith. Faith just means trusting in God, mm -hmm. having a confident expectation that God is good all the time. And I'm going to believe even when I can't see it, yeah. right? I'm going to believe what the word says, even though um, I can't see it with my physical eyes. And what that does is it always changes the conversation. It changes your view of everything that you're looking at, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like, I can't see with my physical eyes right now what this promise looks like. So Lord, I want to see it on the inside because mm -hmm. it'll give me hope for the future. And I think then things begin to change for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think, I think that's a tricky one. I think that because the patterns of thinking in people are so, so ingrained after years, but, um, but living by faith and not by sight is going to, how we're going to overcome fear, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and I think it's almost like there's two things, isn't there? That we've got to, the word has to become so real to us on the inside. Yeah. And so part of that is painting that picture. Yeah. You know, we, I think we'll talk about this at the end, just different pictures in the word yeah. and how God uses that to, to make it so real to us. And, and I think as well, we have to um, actually just take the word of God and keep choosing to believe it, even when we don't feel it. No, because we were looking at, in the Bible study a few weeks ago and we looked at the verse in Isaiah. It's Isaiah 41, 10. So I wanted to read this. Because it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my hand, right hand, with the right hand of my righteousness. Okay? And so again, we've got that. It's, a, it's almost like, fear not. Yeah. We've, been to, we've been told not to fear and we've just said like that that's hard not to do what what what, what is fear though define that for me it is well some is it just um, is it just in your head or do you i sometimes feel afraid yes. yeah do you know what I, mean? I, that's what, I think it isn't it doesn't feel that logical because actually I, I think when we start to unpack our fears mm -hmm. um if we start to describe what we're being afraid of we start to realize oh actually i think just my used to talk about it was it false evidence appearing real Actually, so does that mean we're actually expecting something bad? We're, we're afraid because we're expecting negative, bad, things awful to yes. things to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I and I think there's a lot of emotion attached to it. So actually, at times when we explore the evidence, there's often not a whole lot of things that yeah. are that are holding it up. Yeah. But actually, there's a lot of emotion, almost like catastrophizing worst case scenarios. Just thoughts that, that start to magnify things. Yeah. And that's why I think, you know, so much in the word is about magnify the Lord. Yeah. Because actually, if you think about it, we can't magnify the Lord. Yeah. Our brains aren't capable of making God to who he really is. But what we do is anything that's in front of us, we magnify. Yeah. Mostly the bad stuff because we're trying to, it's not that we're just negative people. It's just that we're trying to protect ourselves. So um, all of these things that come, you know, anything that we sense is going to be a danger. We, we're then like on high alert and it mm -hmm. becomes bigger and bigger in our minds. So I think, you know, so if you just read these verses and you think fear not, it's like so God says fear not, but then he tells you something, which is yeah. I am with me. I am with you. So here, here's the reason why you don't need to, to live in negative emotion. Yeah. Expecting the worst. Yeah. Right. So. And it's that sense of he says it. Now, I think at times when people read the word, they're hoping that they're going to feel the emotion with it. So like, yeah. you know, I'm saying this, I've heard people say, well, I know it says fear not for, I, for I'm with you, but I don't feel like God's with me. So yeah. how can I not be afraid? So if I can't feel it, it's not real. Yeah. But and faith I, says you won't see it. Yeah. And I, I think you can say you can, or feel it straight away. Yeah. But you don't live by that. Yeah. You lift up to a higher. Absolutely. And it's, it is that thing. thing of trust, like you were just saying, we actually have to trust that this is the truth. Yeah. Whether we feel it or not. And I think the more that we align ourselves to that and go, actually, well, Jesus, if I believe that you're real and that you're living inside me and you tell me not to fear because you are with me, I have to practice that presence every day. And not like I have to, like, but actually when I do this, when I 
you know, our, I've listened to a lot of um, speakers, preachers who say they get up every day and practice these things and say, God, thank you that you're right here with me. Yeah. I thank you that you're, you know, and literally throughout the day are having that conversation so that they become accustomed to the fact that Jesus is with them. So it's not like they just quote this verse once a day when they feel a bit afraid, but they, 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 they practice, practice that presence. It's of, like me going to the me. gym. I'm just thinking as you're, uh, for those of you who are watching, you probably go, it's clear that you are going to the gym and, and you look amazing. So thank you for that. But, um, you know, I, I, I've got to walk by faith and not by sight. It's not, you, know, you know, when you're sitting there and I'm having to help uh, Adam, you know, just with his exercises, keep his technique right and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you believe that right yeah but but he's young and he's in you know mm -hmm. he's really enthusiastic he's got but he does have stuff to learn he needs some it's that enthusiastic beginner is that's that how enthusiastic we call beginner. it in the business world yeah and so I, I've, I've been going along there just to help you're him keep the disillusioned on, learner keep him on the right tracks right but but it's definitely you all you walk by faith <laughs> and not by sight because i'm sitting there like like you're busting and i'm going i know this is the right thing to do it doesn't feel particularly comfortable. I can't really see much changing. You know, you, you want to walk out like Popeye right after after mm -hmm. you've been to the gym for twenty five minutes, mm -hmm. and um, but you're not. But you've got to trust in the process, isn't yeah. it? To go, if I keep exercise, because faith is a muscle that has to be exercised, mm -hmm. and at some point, you know, yes, I will look. I, I'll look like Adam. That's that's the goal. That's the goal. Amen, says Penny. Right, and the thing is, you go. Um, I know, and but but it is true, isn't it? It's like like. That's what it's like. All the emotions inside me go, this isn't working. Stop it. You're stupid. But you kind of know under the surface, hopefully, <laughs> you said, oh, under the surface, something's changing. Something's changing. I think. Deep down. Well, we'll let the people judge and that's, decide, will we? That's true. Amen. I love <laughs> that. Amen. I know. So God says, don't be afraid. Number one, why? Because I'm with you. And he says, don't be dismayed. Uh, that's, that's a funny word there. Don't be dismayed. Um, it means like, like alarm or apprehension well actually one of the definitions um for it was to, to depress the spirit of courage oh wow that was really interesting isn't it yeah because i think when we think about feeling hopeless yeah. it's like all courage is gone everything's almost like the life's been sucked out of you the energy goes it's yeah. and that's part of the definition isn't it it's like uh -huh. you know you feel daunted intimidated disheartened energy is literally sapped from you when you're dismayed mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and God says, "Don't, because if you're if you fear, mm -hmm. energy's going to go from you." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But He goes, "I'm God." Yeah, it's like uh, in the middle of all this, you've got to remember these situations, these circumstances are not the final truth. I am. Yeah. I'm God. Absolutely, and again, it's just that thing of lift your eyes up, and um, we kind of took this verse apart in the Bible study, and and what I loved, it was Maureen actually went through it for us and. She was saying like there's 11 points in this verse and there's two things that God tells us to do, which was don't be afraid and don't be dismayed. But the other nine points were all about what he was going to do. And there was a f there was lots of different things that we went through, but there was three it's, points. But is, is that not an amazing thing though, when you think yeah. about that? It's like, because how many of us live with, I am going to do all of this and then God's going to do his bit. You know, mm -hmm. like you do your bit and then at the point where you're, you're absolutely knackered, exhausted. Like you, you, you do it all, and then God, it's almost like God rides in on a white horse at the end after you've knocked yourself sideways. Yes, or He's not going to do His bit until he, yeah, He's seen you make that, an effort. That's even worse, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, huh. it's like the things you, know you say to the kids. I'm not helping you. You're not going to try. Well, well, do you know? Um, those of you might know, Penny and I went on a. a we're, we're doing a boating license, which is quite good fun. Um, learn how to drive a boat, or pilot a boat, and I haven't got the lingo yet. But the thing is. Like if somebody, it's a, it's a wee bit like saying if somebody fell overboard, you know, we did these man overboard uh, <laughs> exercises. exercises, which was, we actually thought they were going to throw one of us in. And then they went, no, <laughs> no. Probably you don't swim. <laughs> yes. I had a, but so they're going to, they, they said to us like, we're going to do, right, you're going to do man overboard uh, drills. And I was like, well, that's a bit full on for the first lesson. Like, seriously. I was quite glad because they weren't saying woman overboard. Exactly. So like, Happy days. Yeah, throw the fat boy in and see, because he'll probably float. And the thing is, but but what what happens is you don't if somebody falls in, like we have this view that sometimes the view is well you know I'm not going to rescue you until you at least kick your legs, try and tread water, right? And if you say it like that, it seems ridiculous, doesn't it? But mm -hmm. we have this view. There is this view of you know God does only when He has seen us do. 
Yeah. But God's never moved by our effort, our performance or anything else. He's moved because he loves us. Yeah. You know, so it's interesting you said there, you know, the the weight here for our future, like how, how can you have hope, good mental health, be confident about tomorrow? Because the weight of responsibility lies much yeah. more with him than it does with us. Absolutely. And that's what that verse says, isn't it? Yeah. And that. I mean, some of the other points that we brought out, I thought were incredible because it says about how God will strengthen us. And again, um, the beautiful definition for this was God will harden you to difficulties. Oh, I love it. And for me, I thought I've experienced that. When I look back now, there's been times where I think, gosh, how did I get through that? God, you know, that was a really tough time. Yeah. But actually, I recognize that God in the midst of that did harden me to the difficulties yeah that actually there was that inner strength that i didn't know was there that the holy spirit in me yeah. got me through those times and actually i came out stronger and probably a lot of people ex have experienced that in life where you just if you were told what you're going to have to walk through you'd think i'm never there's gonna, no chance there's no way i'm going to get through that but actually the lord in the midst of it you don't go under but you actually become um hardened in a good sense it's not hard-hearted but hardened to the effects of yeah the, uh, the attacks of the enemy it makes you resilient yeah. to use that word I, it says i love that god will harden you up the difficulty it sends like all these points that god says he'll do he'll help you um i love that definition so he just says don't be afraid trust me don't be dismayed and then all this other stuff you're like way three times more on God's side than on ours. It says he'll equip you with the means of deliverance from trouble. That's what help means. It's not just um, he'll like zap you out of it, but he'll give you what you need and deliver you from trouble when you're in distress. He'll change it for the better. He'll remedy. He will lend, aid, or assist. When you look at what these words actually mean, it's incredible. He will contribute strength or means. And so like... He says, like, that's how God helps. It's not just like a nice word of, I am with thee, right? Yeah. Knock it's not like a there, there, don't there, worry there, about there, it. Don't worry about it. It's like there's real intent yes. here from God to go, see what you need right now, yeah. right? This is how you can have hope for tomorrow because what you need, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to equip you. I'm going to contribute strength and means and deliver you from trouble, help you in distress and change stuff for the better. Yeah. Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? I, I love it. And what's the last, last thing he the says? The last one was to uphold you. And I was, um, it's that sense of lifting on high to elevate. And um, I think sometimes we want to be lifted out of the circumstances. We're hoping that God, like you say, is going to zap us or, or get us through quicker. But actually, I think it's that that view that we're seated in heavenly places. He wants mm -hmm. us to get, I think you were, t you were doing some research recently around the word repentance. Yeah. And it was that sense of getting a higher view. Go, to the, go to the highest, highest place. place. Yeah. So he wants to lift us up to uphold us. The view to, of heaven, yeah. Yeah. And so we're actually looking down on the situation, even though we're in the situation, it's almost like we're getting lifted out of it to see it from a different I, perspective. I, I, I think that's the key because people get disappointed when they go and go, you know, wh wh where, does, where does the change start? Well, one of the things of repenting, like the Lord says here, he'll strengthen you, help you in this world uphold, is he, he, he helps you to see it from the highest perspective possible, which is the perspective of heaven, and goes look at it from the way that I look at it, and you'll see it totally different, you know? And this thing of upholding means that he supports you, sustains you, keeps you from falling. He, he encourages you and approves of you. It's like, you know, that... that Knowing that, I remember he goes, I'm God. There's this thing of nothing else is God, only me. I am supreme. And when I strengthen, help and uphold you, that's why tomorrow, no matter what is going on, you can have hope, yeah. you know? Yeah. So let, let's start to round this up um, because like, how, where, where do we start with it? Like super practically. Yeah. Um, well, I think even looking at that verse, it's like, for me, I've realized over the years I've gone through, like I know it's good to memorize the Bible, I know, yes. it's, I know it's good to put the it's word into my heart, but it's it's almost like at what level do you want to take it? Is it that you just mindlessly quote a verse over and over? And I think it's good that you get it into you in that way, but sometimes we need to dissect the word. We need to chew on it. Yeah. We need the real life of what these words actually mean to come alive within us. So I think even like, um, you know, it's not about learning loads of verses, but if we know a, f a number of key verses so well, that they actually become so real to us that yeah. it's not just sort of we just quote it in our minds that we logically know I, it. And you're just repeating stuff. But we actually experientially 
understand this of God. It's like we get to really know him. Yeah. So I I I, th- I think in in that there's there's a thing that I just want to finish off this one to go like where where would you start to have hope for tomorrow and keep your mind in a in a good place uh, and your emotions strong? It's it's one thing to understand the Bible is full of pictures. Yeah. Now now you hear me in this. If you're listening, you go where would I start with this? You know, here's the way the Lord's designed you. The 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 West Western education and the way we've been brought up in the West, it's it's very logical. It's very analytical. And, but in the time of the Bible, they taught using pictures. Yeah. And so it represented what the words meant. So um, the Hebrew alphabet, as an example, every word and number has a picture attached to it. So grace, the number five, is an open window. Mm-hmm. And so what that meant was, you know, you see an open heaven. It was the window that you could look through, you know. So there's loads of these examples. So it, this might help you if you're listening. God where this starts is in your imagination now imagination is really important and don't get all flaky about it or freak out like oh no dreaming and what the lord does the the first mention god paints pictures that you can see in your mind and in your heart of what it looks like when his grace touches your situation so let's say you're feeling really weak you're feeling anxious and you read psalm 1 or you read jeremiah and it says like you know like someone who knows god is like a tree planted by streams of living water you know and it says like when the sun comes you're not burnt so so whenever you think about that you go if i was to dwell on that picture and go a strong tree with deep roots drawing up life that's who god says i am and so the whole way through the the whole bible is picture upon picture which feeds your imagination right because isn't it true that we we negatively think we're always always, yes we're painting pictures but normally there yeah of things going wrong and so so imagination is not flaky or new agey Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. it's actually a god-given gift so that you can see on the inside yeah right what it's like when god says this is what i'm like and this is what my grace is like when it hits you, when it hits your situation, and it paints a picture for yeah. you, which causes faith to rise in you yeah. to go, that's what it looks like. I can't see it with my eyes physically mm-hmm. yet, mm-hmm. but I can see it with my heart mm-hmm. and I can see it in faith. Yeah. And so the Lord is continually calling our imagination up. And I, th- I think that's a good place for people to start. Is it take, a, take, a, take a scripture and go, what does this look like? Like, what, what do I see whenever I read this? What goes off in my heart and in my mind? I allow the Lord to really show you that and get your mind onto that. Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, there's loads of examples in people in the world who who understand that idea of being able to visualize something and, mm-hmm. and live up to it. I mean, I remember reading something a number of years ago about a school teacher who went into an area where the, the kids were failing and it was just like, oh, they never actually, you know, they're never going to achieve anything was yeah. the kind of the, how the, that, that school had been painted by a, a lot of people. It was like, it's, it's a write-off. And this teacher came in and started saying to the kids, do you know what, you're all academics, you're all scholars. You're all, and she started talking to them in that language. She, she called them all like professor something um, and started to, to say to them what they were going to become yeah. and started to paint a picture and put loads of like, you know, pictures all around the room of what they could achieve and Brilliant. about careers and all these different things. And they noticed over a period of years that the marks started to slowly go up and go up and go up because all of a sudden these kids, their minds have been lifted up to expect more, to believe for more and to have hope for more. But I think if that's something that can happen by one school teacher in a wee school in America, you know, she's she basically caught hold of the principles of God of like yeah. picture, paint the picture, paint the picture of who you can be. Yeah. This is what this is not stuff that's just airy fairy. This is the word actually making a difference in people's yeah. lives. How do I say it? Well, you say it on the inside first. Yeah. Let 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 the the, the the verse the word paint the picture on the inside. Use your imagination to 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 think about, it. and that's where faith comes from. Okay, brilliant. Well, listen, I hope you've really enjoyed that. Isn't it amazing that we're at the end of this? We're going to do. Gonna listen, be next? We're going to do a new season of podcasts, we? folks. We are. What do you mean? You are we? Well, I'm just wondering if you have a plan. Is I've always got a plan, <laughs> and uh, that plan may be in its infancy right now. But uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. We've certainly enjoyed it. And we're, we're, when we get into a new season, we're gonna we're gonna help um, we're gonna help you with a whole new set of stuff, probably from the Gospel of John. It's going to be good fun. But here's what I'd really encourage you folks to do: is um, 
is as you have gone through these podcasts, re- go over them again and listen and let, let the encouragement just sit in your heart because, you know, this whole thing of 10 reasons why is to go, your faith is not something separate to your experience of the world. It shapes your experience of the world mm-hmm. and gives you hope for tomorrow. If you want hope, and you want to live with a sense of purpose and a sense of, I can believe for more, it's never going to be because of you. And no matter what the challenge is, mm-hmm. there's always the answer found in the scripture Amen. to bring us into into a place of hope because we're, we're called a people of hope. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it? I have. Actually. We've had a ball, <laughs> haven't we? It's got easier as time has uh, yeah. gone on. So listen, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for giving us your support. And remember, exchangechurchbelfast.com. Uh, you can follow us online on Facebook and Instagram and wherever else and uh, Spotify but thanks very much and we will see you in our new season of podcast very soon <laughs>